Well, rel, rel. What we have here today is another pair of rel subwoofers, the HT 1205s. Before we get into this video, if you're a home theater enthusiast and love watching movies and love new home theater equipment, then consider tapping that subscribe button for new weekly videos. So we've recently checked out the bigger versions of these subs, the 1508s. They've got 15 inch drivers while well, these guys have 12s. There's an even smaller version that has a 10 incher in it. So these fall right in the middle of their home theater subwoofer lineup. Now let's get these things unboxed and set up. Inside we get some documentation, the speaker grill, the power cord, and these are some rubber feet. Size-wise, they measure 15 inches wide by 16 inches high by 15.7 inches deep, and each one weighs 38 pounds. They've got a 12-inch driver with a rated response down to 22 hertz. It's powered by a 500 watt Class D amplifier. On the top of the 1205, you'll find a polished 12 millimeter top plate. It gives the subwoofer some stylish flair, but it also is meant to dampen vibrations on the top of the cabinet. On the back are switches for auto power on and phase from zero to 180 degrees. There's a variable crossover and volume knobs. For inputs, you'll have only RCAs. There are no high-level inputs or XLRs. If you need XLRs, you'll have to step up to the 1508s. For setup, these will be hooked up to a Trinov processor and a Zapiti media player for movie watching. They'll be in a dedicated theater with a full 11-channel Arundel sound speaker setup. Now since these don't have XLR inputs, I will have to use an XLR to RCA adapter for each one. I'll also be turning off any processing in the Trinov and using what's available on the subwoofers themselves. As mentioned before, I've had a pair of the bigger 1508s in for review. I thought for home theater centric subwoofers, they were extremely tight and musical sounding. They didn't dig as deep as I would have liked, but they also hit a lot harder than I was expecting. It's tough to find the perfect subwoofer. Well, the first movie I popped in was Edge of Tomorrow's intro. This one really is a test for larger subs, but I figured I'd give it a try anyways. Of course, it doesn't hit those infrasonic 10 hertz notes. If you want your insides to move, then this pair isn't going to cut it. However, from 20 hertz on up, there's plenty of good vibrations to be had. Next is another Tom Cruise classic, War of the Worlds. The pod coming out of the ground has some incredible LFE from about 40 hertz on down. These two paired together can truly pressurize your room. It does depend on how big your room is though. There's killer low end rumble and they can hit extremely hard when that hand comes smashing down. Next up is the first aerial attack in Midway. There's a sustained 30 hertz rumble that seems to last for about a minute or so, peppered with a bunch of bombastic gunshots and explosions.
with a pair of good subwoofers, they can really expand the soundstage. That low rumbling tone gently massages the entire room, and the gunshots just smack you in the face. And speaking of face smacking bass, the Atmos soundtrack in Fury is my go-to title for subwoofer impact. The tank fire should not only provide some impressive slam, but you'll also hear the bass linger off every shot. During some of the quieter scenes, the 1205s also picked up those subtle bass notes from the tanks moving off screen and the little explosions. It's really faint, but again, opens up the soundstage. Jerry took him out. So, anti tank guns there, there, possibly there. I don't know. I need you to rescue my guys. Take the guns out. I can do that. Coming from the bigger 15 inch versions, I wasn't expecting all that much. Surprisingly, these do share the same kind of tactile agility as their bigger brothers. Watching big action movies with explosions and gunshots had enough slam to where I wasn't missing having the larger drivers. Low frequency extension was also surprisingly good in my room. Again, depending on your room size and dimensions, bass response could feel either stronger or weaker than what I heard in my room. The hair on your arms moving type of bass during the intro of Edge of Tomorrow wasn't there, but everything above the lowest frequencies I felt had enough output to have me worried for my downstairs neighbors. I will say even though these do provide ample output during that scene in Midway, where the bass just rumbles and hangs, it wasn't as clean and composed as the bigger 1508s. It was a little lumpier sounding. I mean, these are smaller drivers and half the price, so you've got to give up something somewhere. Still, I was surprised that these little boxes did some justice to these bass-heavy movies. They've got a great low end, impressive mid-bass weight, and they can pick up some of those subtle notes. For $700 each at the time of this video, I feel you're getting almost the same amount of performance as the bigger versions. I mentioned the 1508s sounded smoother overall, and I also think the 1508s were slightly tighter sounding as well. Now, they are twice the price of the 1205s, so you've got to keep that in mind. The 1205s are small, lightweight, and easy to place just about anywhere. I think they're a great value and definitely punch higher than what their price would suggest. So what are your thoughts on the RHT HT 1205s? Have you heard them and how do you think they compare to some of the other brands out there? Leave a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you found it useful, and if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.